I'm John Geddes. I'm a professor here at Oxford University and head of the Department of Psychiatry. And my main area of interest is in mood disorders. I first became aware of Robert Burton and the Anatomy of Melancholy actually when I was a medical student. And it had an enormous influence on me at that time. And it's continued to dip in and out of my professional career ever since. And it is remarkable for a number of reasons. First, to me, is that it's one of the most profound accounts by someone who's experienced mood disorder, of their own mood disorder, and, they, and, and Burton clearly describes that he's writing it as an attempt to manage his own mood disorder. So it's the patient's voice. And this has become increasingly important in our research, and I've certainly found that an incredibly powerful voice when we're developing our research projects. The other thing about Burton that's really interesting is that he's not a physician. He's writing outside of psychiatry or medicine. He's writing from the humanities. And the description he gives of melancholia, depression, is incredibly broad. And so are the approaches he takes to looking at the causes and the treatments or management of the disorder. And this is really interesting because rather than taking a very narrow biomedical focus or looking at you know, drug treatments or I suppose leeches at the time or bloodletting or whatever else, Burton also looks at a range of other approaches to dealing with low mood. And they include everything from exercise through art, reading, the list just goes on. And that's fascinating. And as I've got gone on through my career, the really fascinating thing about that is that those approaches have become more and more a focus of our attention. So rather than just looking at formal medical or psychological approaches to treating mood disorder, we started looking at these other approaches. And Burton got there before us. Burton talks a, a lot about the exercise and um, of course, we're increasingly interested in the health effects of exercise, both on mental health and physical health. A lot of the, our current focus is targeted at the almost direct physiological effects or the fitness effects of exercise. So we do active walking, we've got to raise our heart rate. Burton's approach is rather different and to him, exercise was something that was most beneficial if you kept it beneath the level that led you to break a sweat. And it's quite interesting looking at what he meant by exercise because it includes just about every kind of activity that, if you like, is a distraction, is a change of thinking, so it's actually a very different approach, and it raises a couple of things that we may be missing out on in our current research into exercise. The other really important thing that comes out for me is moderation. So there's a sense that if you do anything too much, the, the benefits will be outweighed by the costs. So he talks, of, and this is very relevant for Oxford and for students and you know, scholars. Too much study can be bad for your mental health. So there's this, there's this sense that you need a balanced life, which again he gets from the, from the ancients and from the classics, but he articulates in a way that is early modern and it's, it's something we can recognize and chimes with us. And I think it's a very important message.